Y'all don't miss me, man? That's crazy. You don't miss me? Come on now, dog. Huh? Come Child. on, man. Stupid. You too. What's good? What's going on, man? It's your boy B, and we back in this mud with another video, man. Y'all see the title. We got Victor Wimbenyama. We'll get her in the NBA. That's a crazy title, by the way, man. This video right here was made by um, Brian Sutter, Sutterer, MD. So apparently he's like a doctor, um, if I'm not mistaken. So look, we all know the NBA draft um, is coming up. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's Thursday, this upcoming Thursday. So we're definitely going to be making videos around that. So y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, sub button, turn notification on, all that good stuff about with the channel. Y'all already know what to do. But anyways, man, we got this video right here on um, pretty much why Victor, uh, Victor Wembe Yama will get hurt in the NBA. Now, we all know Victor Wembe Yama is super skinny, but but very tall and athletic, but he like real super skinny for his height, uh, which I like, I, me personally, I say I like, if he gains some weight, he definitely going to be unstoppable. But we all know injuries always happen in the league. We watched a video on why uh, there's a lot more energy in today's NBA than the on um, like back then when Jordan was playing, Larry Bird, and all the other great um, NBA players, legends was playing. But anyways, let's check this video out, man. If you guys enjoyed the video, y'all know what to do, man. Hit that like button. Subscribe, subscribe, click the bell, like, turn the notifications on so you don't miss no bangers, man. Again. Victor Wimbanyama might be the most can't-miss prospect in the history of pro sports. But I hate to break it to you Spurs fans because he's almost certainly going to get injured Ooh. in the NBA. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in this channel Boy, you fall like that right now, boy, that look like a, I don't even know, a ACL, ankle? He's almost certainly going to get Damn. injured in the NBA. Woo Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter it and my goal like in this a baby channel giraffe. is to about the medical side of the world of sports. And today we're going to be diving into these medical and health concerns surrounding Victor Wimbanyama. By the end of this video, I want you to think differently about how we look at injury risk in NBA players. And the most important place to start is just by realizing how common injuries are within the NBA. In the 2017, 18, and 19 seasons, there were over 300 unique NBA players who suffered an injury in each of those seasons. Most recently in 2023, this number ballooned up to nearly 400. So we have to just start off and understand with this discussion that injuries are part of the game. We should expect Facts. that players are going to get injured, not be surprised when they do. But obviously there's a big risk between somebody tearing their ACL and just missing one or two games for some back tightness. To understand those risks for a specific player like Wimbanyama, I think we have to start off with their injury history. The first big injury for Wimbanyama mm. was a stress fracture of his fibula. Now, the concern here is everybody heard, uh-oh, a big man who suffered a stress fracture because we've all heard about the big men of the past who had these repeat stress fractures or just fractures in their lower body. But with Wimby, it's a different story and not something that I would be concerned about. When we look at the lower leg, in the lower leg there's the fibula, which is the small bone on the outside, and then there's the tibia. Okay. The tibia is the big shin bone. This is the bone that carries the majority of the weight through our leg. The fib Man, I remember them shin splits, bro. Like, how many of y'all like ever ran track? And like, especially if like your first time, I don't know if they like happen to people when they like, they kind of like used to it, but like when my first time running track was when I was in high school, bro, I got like shin splits, bro. Like that, that jump, that's a painful feeling right there. Like shin splits, man. Come on now, dog. I can have the track. Come on, man. Stay on the football field, man. The fibula bone is just kind of along for the ride. There's a small amount of weight that's transferred through the fibula, but nothing like what we see in the tibia. A tibia stress fracture is a much more significant injury. It's something like what Cade Cunningham was dealing with this past year before he ultimately had surgery. And so hearing about a fibula stress fracture in no way makes me worried about the resultant forces that are being put through a player's lower limb and this notorious phrase about stress fractures that might scare us based on previous players. This isn't like the fracture that Embiid had on his foot or that we've seen in some of these other big men. This is a typically non-weight-bearing bone in the lower leg that is not a thing we worry about long term. If we scroll okay. higher up, the next injury for Wimbenyama was an injury to his psoas. And the, the psoas is, is one of the primary hip flexors. It's actually a group of muscles made up of the iliacus, which sits deeper inside, right up against the inner portion of the pelvis. And then the psoas major and the psoas minor. And then come down to form a tendon that inserts onto the lesser trochanter in the femur 
Whenever you fire these hip flexor muscles, of course, you bring your knee upwards, you bring your knee hey, forward. Honey, and honey. a hip flexor injury, something that's been this long before that's healed, gives me no pause for concern going forward. We typically will see these injuries in tennis players or anybody who's doing a lot of repetitive explosive hip flexion. But for a basketball player, to me, this was kind of a one-off type of thing that I wouldn't so be worried real about issue? having any resultant effects down the road. This isn't something like injury to the cartilage or a joint or a big major tendon that can linger. I see this as just a muscle strain like anybody else can get and not something that we should be worried about. Then along the way, when Minyama had a finger fracture, which there's nothing you can do to prevent or try to prehab for finger fractures. And then the final one was a shoulder contusion to his right shoulder. Now, the reporting on this one was a little bit hard to localize, but one report said it was more just a bruise of the shoulder blade, which would honestly be probably the best case scenario here. Sometimes we'll hear about shoulder subluxations or some partial dislocations of the shoulder. Bro, that happened to me when I was lifting weights, bro. Like the, I was trying to be arm strong and you know what I'm Come saying? On, trying dog. to be that, that guy, that nigga Come in the gym. Come on, man. And uh, messed around and tried to get an extra set in. Not a set, but a rip. And the weight. The weight just just fade. I think I took my focus off the the arm and the weight just went way back. This is the dumbbells. I was terrified of dumbbells for at least like a solid two years. I don't think I touched a dumbbell. Like I was just strictly bench press after that. But like you ever dislocate a shoulder, bro? Cause like once you dislocate a shoulder, if I'm not mistaken, I believe like you tear like your cartilages and stuff like that in your shoulder. So like it like once you tear that, I don't think that grow back like the tissue or whatever. So that's like one of the most painful feelings ever, bro. You can't even sleep on that mud a whole lot, man. Y'all let me know if y'all ever had like some really painful injuries by playing sports or working out or whatever the case may be at work. Let me know in the comments, man. We're joint being referred to as contusions or just sprains. And so that would be the only thing that would concern me if that were the case. But I think I saw enough reports that this was just simply a bruise to the bone, a bruise to the scapula okay. that can take a long time to heal and wouldn't give me concern going forward. So when we look back at Wimby's injury it's history, right it really is isn't anything or right to suggest though. some major underlying structural problem. There's no history of anything like an ACL tear. There's no history of anything like a meniscus tear or a joint like a knee surgery. As far as we know, there's no hardware in his body that could cause problems down the road. So when I look at his injury history, yes, he's had injuries, but so have all of these kids that are getting through college and through the system here in the U.S. Most Correct. of them have gone through some type of injury in their career. We just probably haven't heard about it because they weren't as high profile as somebody like Wimbanyama. Next, we'll get into some injury comparisons and just what I think about his risk going forward. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. Thank you to Element for sponsoring this video. Element is a if we're inside any flavor, complex injury risk profile are Kevin Durant and Anthony Davis. Kevin Durant mainly because of that similar KD. lanky, longer body type, along with the style of play between the two. Like Kevin Durant, Wimbenyama has these very long, skinny legs. He's got these long, skinny limbs, these long, skinny arms. And one of the injuries that I would think about as being more likely for somebody like this would be like Durant has suffered with something like an MCL injury in the seven, knee. Five, when you've got seven, these six. big long legs, you have big long lever arms and longer lever arms in physics result in more torque applied at the ends of those lever arms at the pivot points. Probably the most concerning moment where Wimby thankfully wasn't injured was this play where we saw him slide. Yeah, Again, nothing he can prevent. His left foot slid out here on the court and then he goes down. But look at what happens with his right knee. Yeah, that position that is going to put crazy. an immense amount of load potentially on your MCL. And the longer your limbs are, the longer your legs are, and the thinner they are, Boy. the more resultant torque that you can apply through those joints at the end of these pivot points. Also, with Wimbenyama being so much taller than everybody else, these contact points... But then, too, I've seen people fall, too, and they, they just get up like nothing happened. So, I, honestly, I just did, really think it depends on the individual as well. Like, some people can, like control their weight while they falling i feel like they got a lot to do with it too i ain't no doctor and i don't got no md at the end of my name b twice md sounds crazy Come on now, dog. So, but like, i just Come honestly on, believe like the man. way you because so you know how, like you could jump up in there and you can land on your feet but you can like, kind of land like quiet and then you got some people jumping there and they land and shake the whole room but i feel like it just all depends on how you your body control body movement of what's For going people, on otherwise might hit him Mobility. up in the hips or might hit him in the thigh. 
are going to be striking him in the knees because he's taller. The knees are higher up off the ground. And so those impact points are gonna be more at the joints, potentially again, leading to more risk of things like MCL injuries. But those are not season career ending types of things. Those are just part of the knocks and bumps that you get with playing NBA basketball. When it comes to someone like Anthony Davis, I think about things like finger jams, finger sprains, broken fingers, because of having such big, long fingers and playing in a way where you're gonna be reaching for a lot of passes and a lot of balls. We all remember, of course, this picture comparing Wimbanyama's hands to Michael Jordan's. You can see just how long and skinny his fingers are. And it goes back to that same concept of these True. lever arms. When you have longer bones spanning between Michael those Jordan hands big as joints, too, though. you're gonna have more force and torque that's applied through those joints because of these longer lever arms. And so big, long, skinny fingers are going to be more prone to getting finger jams, finger sprains, those types of things, like what we tend to see a lot with someone like Anthony Davis. The most optimistic thing for me though about Wimby's game and just injury risk is how safe he tends to play. Right now, I would say John Morant is at more risk of getting hurt than Victor Wimbanyama when he comes into the league which might sound yeah, wild true. when we look at how just tall and abnormal when Benyama looks. But you I could probably say the same thing about Westbrook when Westbrook came in the league. Like, just, just, just throw his body to the rim, to the rack. <laughs> he don't care. Think about the style of play. Because oftentimes, remember, injuries occur from some underlying mechanism. What goes up must come down. And the more high risk you play, the more you put yourself in positions to ultimately get hurt. The more you're a point guard and you're doing a lot of jump stops, like we saw happen when Derrick Rose tore his ACL, the more you're doing these certain things that come along with injuries, the more likely you are to get hurt. And we don't see that style of play from Wimbanyama. The reason I was so concerned about Zion coming out of college was, again, that style of play. His Not weight. just Zion's physical size. It was the combination of his physical size with the way that he played, the yeah. aggressive moves, the hard moves, this just kind of recklessness that made Zion who he was but again, puts more force through your body, more force through your joints, and puts you in positions where you're more likely to get hurt. With Wimby, we don't seem to see that. We seem to see a more controlled, more kind of graceful, calmer style of play, relying on his skill, yeah, got rather than style. just this high-flying, aggressive athleticism, which I think bodes really well for him. The last specific thing I want to touch on that, again, is another positive for Wimby Nyama. I honestly are, believe I, if, if he was more aggressive... He would definitely be spooky, but like you said, it would be more risk involved. All of these warm-up kind of injury prevention videos that we've seen. Of course, this was Wimbanyama when he was doing little toe shuffle activities here. We see him do all these drills before his warm-ups. He's doing a lot of different work with resistance bands, really trying to work on his stability, his core strength. A lot of great things that seem to be centered around this idea of injury prevention or prehab doing things before you potentially would get hurt in order to help prevent you from getting hurt and just make your body more resilient. This specific one that we see him doing here, this is hip flexion. This is activating those hip flexor muscles, that ilius psoas that we were talking about earlier. This exercise is really working what we call the intrinsic muscles in our feet. Intrinsic meaning inside. And so within our foot, we have all kinds of small little muscles that help to control the fine movements of our foot. And generally speaking, the stronger and the more conditioned your intrinsic foot muscles are, the more your muscles are allowed to kind of absorb the impact and load through your foot as opposed to putting it through your joints. So okay. intrinsic muscle strength, good intrinsic muscle function in the feet is really important for overall foot health. So when I look at all this from Wim Binyama, I see a young guy that is very aware of the need to be doing things to actively get his body in the best shape possible to prevent injuries. I think they're very well aware of the risk and the history of bigger guys in the NBA and foot injuries because a lot of this seems to be centered around his feet. So just the fact that he has that mindset already at a young age and has people around him who are thinking about these things is all extremely positive because we don't always see this in guys coming out of either college or high school here in the States. So overall, in summary, I'm not that concerned about Wimbenyama's health in the NBA. But like I said, he's going to get injured. Just at some point in his NBA career, he's going to have an injury. And I think for yeah. his sake, my hope is that it doesn't happen early on. But something will happen. It's just the nature of playing in the NBA and the numbers. He'll get some knee injury. He'll get some muscle strain. He'll get a sprained ankle. Something will happen. And that's fine. That's no fault that's to him. That's the part of basketball. My hope with these younger guys is that it doesn't happen right away because... At some point it will, and I don't want it to happen in the beginning where then he's gonna get this label of being injury prone and high injury risk because a lot of us just see something abnormal. We see the extremes. We see the really short guy, the really big guy, the really tall guy, 
and we think because they're different, they must be at risk of getting hurt. And of course, if that happens early in his career, that's going to influence the entire narrative going forward. Yeah. But it shouldn't. That'd his past injuries are not ones that are concerning to me. He hasn't had surgery as far as we're aware on any of his joints. His playing style is not reckless and careless. It's very True. controlled and very low risk. And he's already aware of and doing things to help with injury prevention and rehab in his body. But there is always the big unknown here, right? There's so much of these guys' health histories that we will never know in the public. There's all kinds of different risk factors for things like an ACL tear that have to do with somebody's anatomy that we'll never know. For example, the slope of the tibia, the top of the shin bone, based on how much posteriorly the tibia slopes, can be an increased risk factor for an ACL tear. But we're not going to know that without ever looking at Wimbenyama's yeah. x-rays. We don't know the genetics of these guys. We don't know all those other risk factors that honestly probably play more of a role in them getting hurt and having injury plagued or kind of more susceptible careers than all this just external stuff we see when we look at them on the court. Remember, there's also a big difference between somebody having an injury and somebody who is hurt a lot or in pain a lot. You look at a player like Kimball Walker, who at this point in his career, it's well known, that his knees just can't hold up to the load of an NBA season. It's not like he's having a new injury in his knees, but his underlying just joint health is such that he's more prone to that repetitive wear causing pain and causing issues. A player like Anthony Davis might get a lot of heck because even though it might not be specific true injured structures, there does seem to be a lot of times where he's just more sore or more hurt. And so it's also important, I think, to tease out the difference between somebody who just is hurt and is sore and in pain a lot versus true structural pathology, structural injuries. Yeah, Either man. way, like I said, when I look at Wimbledon, I'll take care of your body, I'm man. Not that concerned. Things are going to happen. Like I've compared him to some of these other players. Things will occur. Things will happen. But there's nothing that makes me overly worried like I was when, say, Zion Williamson came out of college. So that's it for the video, everybody. Let me know, as always, any questions or comments down below. Do you think it's risky? Do you think he's going to get hurt? What do you think about this whole con? Man, I actually agree with Dr. Brian Sutter. <laughs> Shout out to him. Shit like that. Shit like that. I actually agree with what with majority of what he's saying, man. Um, Victor went back. Y'all but had a couple of injuries, but it won't nothing crazy to like side him out for like a season or. Uh, a lot of games or anything of that nature. But injuries are prone to happen just due to the nature of the sport of basketball. A lot of fast movement, a lot of stopping, a lot of shooting, a lot of dribbling. People people be collapsing one another. But he's not one of those players that, that like like you said, like John ja Morant or like a D. Rose or someone just super aggressive going to the paint and just running in and colliding with one another, just throwing their body all over the court. But, like, his play style literally helps him prevent him from getting injured at an even higher risk. Of playing a game of basketball but y'all get in the comments and let me know y'all thoughts and opinions below man do y'all agree with dr brian sutter let me know in the comments man i'm always down there showing love man if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to hit that like button sister sister subscribe click the bell like i'll tell you notifications all so you don't miss no bangers and speaking of bangers be sure to check out one of the videos at the end of the screen because it's definitely a banger I would miss it if I was you, man. <laughs> Come on now, dog. Hey, look, though. NBA Draft Come Thursday, on, man. man. Look, I'm going to see what I can do for y'all. I'm going to see what I can do.